Hey, hey, you guys, let's talk about boundaries. Like, what is, what is this? I just realized that's from Annie's little, like, pen thing that we put back there when she's sitting back there. <laughs> it's just, like, hanging off the seat. Anyways, let's have a quick chat about boundaries for a second because if you fear, if you're just not good at boundaries, if you just don't know how to do them or if you just fear them in general, chances are you're just worrying. You either have a fear of telling someone what it is that you need. Maybe you just have absolutely no idea what it is that you need in general. Or you're just worrying about what this person is going to think of you when you tell them what you need and how you feel. Let's start with the most obvious for me. I feel like most people that really struggle with boundaries are going to have a fear of just knowing what they want in general or knowing when a boundary has been violated. This is basically a trauma response. It may not seem like a trauma response, but hear me out. If you straight up know that I really don't often even know when a boundary has been violated or what it is that I actually even need or want, then you were never taught how to stay in alignment with your true self. Instead, you were actually taught how to do the complete opposite. You were taught how to detach from what it is that you think and how you feel because by detaching from what it is that I really do need inside, it allowed me to focus more on the outside or focus on you and if I focused on you, then I ended up getting what it is that I wanted because I wasn't able to provide it for myself. Let me explain. When you were a child, you needed certain things that you were not able to give yourself. And it can be the most basic things. It could be someone feeding you. It could be someone, you know, giving you emotional attention, physical attention. Like I said, feeding you, bathing you, all of those things, making you feel like you are truly enough. So right there, that's what it is that you needed. Also, what you needed is you needed someone to be in your life to help you to stay in connection with what it is that you think and how you feel and teaching you how to do that in a healthy way. So you're not just going to go around every single day and doing exactly what you need in every single moment. No, because of course we all have to do things sometimes that we don't want to do and that's just called adulting and life in general. Kids have to do it when they go to school and they don't want to go to school, but it is about understanding or having that connection to myself to know what I do think, how I feel, and to not be judged or shamed for it. It's not about giving the child everything that they want, but it is about honoring and listening and making them feel comfortable in the process of being connected to themselves. And of course, you're never going to have a real deep connection with yourself. You're always going to try to be someone else or have someone else's views. And we're just going to end up being copycat versions of each other because we don't really know who we are or what we want in life. All of these things can happen to you and it doesn't mean that you're going to be severely codependent, which is kind of like what this is leading towards, right? Like just like a detachment from your own self, but it does mean that you're not going to know how to give yourself the things that you actually do need. So if step one is looks up, I just don't even know when a boundary has been violated. I don't even know what it is that I need in every single moment. I don't really know how I feel. I've never bothered to like practice this stuff of being aligned with myself and listening to myself and then giving myself what it is that I really truly need. If you haven't done any of that, that is because that is something that was not taught. And also now if you're a child growing up, a teenager, hell, even an adult, if you are in a relationship with someone who is very, very unhealthy and manipulates you and shames you and guilts you and, you know, gaslights you and does all of these things and you're not aware of it, then you're going to keep reinforcing that detachment to self. So let's say you are starting the practice of, okay, I'm going to really start focusing on me, what it is that I think, what it is that I feel, what it is that I innately need. And that right there still, you have to really break that down into like small little moments because life can happen really fast as we're adulting and we can neglect ourselves and not give ourselves daily the things that we really need in order to be filled up inside. Of course, now when that happens, we end up really craving things outside of ourselves to fill us up, whether it's relationships or validation or social media or what have you. So number one, let's start giving ourselves what it is that we need every single day and starting to and starting learning how to be in alignment with our true self. But the next real hurdle that you're going to face is being able to communicate those things to someone that you know might give you a little pushback. Or maybe that person person won't even give you any pushback at all and this is really just your lack of confidence or self-esteem to fear confrontation of what someone could possibly think or do or say to give you the pushback. 
when we care so much about how we're going to disappoint someone and again all of these thoughts are assumptions like maybe you very well will disappoint someone maybe you will very well upset someone and they're going to give you a little bit of backlash but a lot of times before we even go into these conversations with people we just assume these worst case scenarios so first thing that we have to understand is that really caring on a very deep level about what someone thinks of you for enforcing these boundaries really stems from that trauma response and that codependency. You're going back to that childlike state where you knew that if you said anything, you were not going to get the response that you needed innately. Like you knew intuitively what it is that you needed and you knew you weren't going to get it. So you basically started putting up these walls or defense mechanisms, or you just completely shut down altogether. What we have to really accept is that we're not five years old anymore and stop responding from that wounded space. So many times I cannot even tell you, and I've been there too, where we're just basically operating from like that childlike state. We don't realize that we're not five years old anymore, that we don't really need anyone to agree with us or to like us. We really just have to take care of ourselves. Like you're Real responsibility at this stage of your life is to take care of yourself. That has got to come first above anything else. So when I started, for me, when I started really like accepting and learning that you're right, I'm, I'm not five. Like I don't need you to agree with me. I don't need your approval. I just need to give myself what it is that I need in order to feel good. This is a seriously powerful place to be because you kind of like realize that this is not a need. This is just you living out your traumas. Of course, the next thought was going to be, well, are they going to be mad? And what are they going to do? And I don't know how they're going to react. Wouldn't it be great if we could just know what exactly is going to happen so we can prepare ourselves? But you don't really need to practice this. You don't really need to overthink it. You don't need to be in the shower and thinking like, okay, well, if I say this and then they say that, then I can respond with this. Like you don't really need to do that. I think when you first get that first point, which is I'm not five years old anymore and any amount of me really caring because I've upset someone because they're not getting what they want is a trauma response is me living through that like five-year-old stuff that's like craving someone to like see me and agree with me and tell me that it's perfectly fine that I feel this way. Well, I'm 43. <laughs> And I don't need that anymore. So I think once you really start reinforcing, I don't really need that anymore. I'm a grown adult. Then it helps you to start detaching from that story that says, well, what if they're mad? I don't want anyone to be upset with me for what it is that I'm saying or thinking or what it is that I need. But I also know that I can't control that. And I've kind of relinquished that exhausting thing inside my head that just wants to play these situations out again and again and again. I know that anyone who truly knows me will and values me and, and loves me and is also healthy themselves. So someone can really love you and they're just not healthy themselves to be able to get this, that when you do put up these little boundaries that they're going to give you backlash and they're going to give you pushback. It doesn't mean that everyone's narcissistic or everyone's completely toxic. I think most people that aren't getting their way will give you a little bit of pushback because they also don't know how to sit and how that's making them feel for not getting their way. And it's the same thing with me. When I started learning this, I learned, I had to learn the other side of the coin, which is okay, I'm not getting my way. And instead of me either shutting down or being passive aggressive or whatever it was that maybe I did as my default, I had to learn how to sit with how that made me feel and deal with that. And then it allowed me to not do those passive aggressive defense mechanisms that I'd always done in the past. So first things first, what we're gonna start working on is being more in alignment with ourselves really the only way you can practice this on like a big scale and a small scale and really it's the little things every single day that you're going to do that's going to help you to really understand how to do this when it comes to bigger situations is through self-parenting like you have to learn how to parent yourself throughout the day for the rest of your life I mean this is what you're supposed to be doing constantly to take the best care of yourself I will actually link my self-parenting course down below definitely go check it out you can also work 
work with me and do coaching sessions and take the course at the same time, which is my self parenting bundle. And I will link that as well. Next thing I want you to do is I want you to understand this concept. If you are practicing self parenting and you're really doing this work, you're going to have to do it with step two as well. But I want you to understand that anyone that gives you a backlash is just trying to control you in the situation. They are upset because they're not getting what they want. That has nothing to do with you. Of course, there's going to be a story of like, well, I care. Well, I don't want them to be upset. And of course, we don't want to be heartless people, but you have to let go of the need or the guilt or the shame or the anything uncomfortable that's going on inside of you. And you can really only do that when you are self parenting. So while you're doing two, you're also doing three, which is dealing with how you feel and the uncomfortable things that you're experiencing because you feel like you've let someone down. So all of this really ties into that self parenting stuff. When you have like deep levels of empathy, when you're a very sensitive person, you're going to think a little bit more about this. You're going to feel a little bit more. So sometimes we can really sit in some guilt or anything uncomfortable that's coming up for you because you do care and that's fine I just want you to know the difference between caring but still letting it go and also not living through those childhood wounds I hope that made sense for you guys and I hope it gave you a little bit of a rundown on boundaries and really why people struggle with them so bad I think it's boundaries is one of those things where it's not just like all right let me have good boundaries like there's layers to boundaries and there's different steps and at each level or step that you're on requires another version of yourself but you're never going to get good at it unless you kind of break this down and start doing one thing at a time the thing that's really helpful is that unfortunately there's people in your life specifically that you're thinking about that will trigger your need to really focus on boundaries so really this is about practicing with you and this person who tends to kind of like give you a little push and when it comes to it and give you a little backlash hope i hope you enjoyed this video you guys if you did don't forget to subscribe click the links below if you're interested in working with me and i will see you in my next one bye guys